Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just notepad and a command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part one of my polymorphism tutorial mini-series here. So I'm going to open up my web browser here to my website, javacjava.com, select menu and Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the polymorphism part one. The rules for polymorphism can be somewhat confusing and I will do a mini-series covering the details of each rule. I highly recommend watching my introduction to polymorphism tutorial before continuing. The topic for this tutorial is uh, basically the first one. A reference variable must be declared as a specific type. Okay, that's pretty obvious there. Now that reference variable may be assigned to an object of that specific type or any object that is a subtype of the declared type. You might be going, what? Okay, well let's go ahead and come down here and cut straight to the chase and highlight some code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Right, I'm going to move my browser off screen here. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking new shortcut CMD, next and finish. Let's open that up. First thing I'll do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive a an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I am going to make a directory here called Java with the MD command. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another one called, another folder called uh, Poly1. Change that to the Poly1 folder. And I'm on Notepad. Uh, Poly1.java. Poly1.java is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as my compilation unit. All right, let's go ahead, or a compilation unit. Anyway, um, so got this class poly1 with the main method entry point and it's going to run a bunch of uh, statements in here. Now let's take a look at the class hierarchy that I got going on here. Um, class car, right, doesn't extend anything but it implicitly extends object. If you've been watching my tutorial series thus far you know that. Now um, picking up basically from the introduction to polymorphism and if you watch that tutorial you know I have this average price method in here that simply displays to the console this particular string literal for a car object. Okay then picking up right up where we left off there Honda Accord extends car and I'm overriding the average price and displaying this to the console. <coughs> Toyota Prius extends car I'm overriding average price displaying this to the console. I added in Ford Mustang too as well. Same thing, override average price and display this to the console. And I added in a Shelby GT350, extends Ford Mustang, right? Which also extends car. So basically, Shelby GT350 is a subclass of Ford Mustang, which is a subclass of, um, sorry, Ford Mustang is a subclass of car and Shelby G3 T, GT350 is a subclass of Mustang, right? So Ford Mustang is a superclass of Shelby GT350, and Ford Must and Car is a superclass of Ford Mustang, okay? So that basically makes this a, um, a subtype, and this is a subtype of car. Both of these are subtypes of cars when you go down the hierarchy there. Okay, and that one I've overridden the average price method to as well to display this to the console here. Okay, and I've also overridden the toString method there, right, which is inherited from the object class, and that will simply return this string literal right here. Okay, let's come up here and have some fun. Let's save this here. So, I've got five reference variables, C1 through C5, all of car type. Now, the uh, first one is pointing to, is basically referring to a new car object. C2 is referring to a new Honda Accord object. C3 is referring to a new Toyota Prius object. C4 is referring to a new Ford Mustang object. And C5 is referring to a new Shelby GT350 object. Now if you're looking at this and thinking, ah, oh, what on earth? That doesn't make any sense. 
coming back to my website here, you know, this is where I stated um, that a reference variable may be assigned to an object of that specific type or any object that is a subtype of the declared type, right? So C1 is assigned to that specific car type, right? And this is a subtype of car. Toyota Prius is a subtype of car. Ford Mustang is a subtype of car. And I really should be saying like Shelby GT 350 is a subtype of Ford Mustang, which is a subtype of car, right? Same type, subtype of this, subtype of that, subtype of this, subtype of this is a subtype of that. So essentially, by the rules of inheritance, Shelby GT 350 basically inherits everything from car, okay? And then I'm just going to use C1 average price, average price, average price, average price, right? To invoke this average price method on C1 through C5. And let's go ahead and see what we get to the console here. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this here real quick. We're going to try to ignore everything that pops up after that. Poly one, let's run this. Okay, let's come down here, right? Okay, so the average price of a new car is 28,400, right? C1 basically is a car object type, right? So that's how, uh, through polymorphism, it knew how to, to invoke this average price method right here, right? Car type, car object, let's just go ahead and, you know, basically run this average price right method right here, invoke that. Now, C2 average price, even though it's a car type, right, the object is a Honda Accord. So the average price comes down here and says, oh, okay, we want to run the Honda Accord average price because that's what type the, that's the actual type of the object, right? The reference variable itself is a car type, but the object type is actually a Honda Accord which happens to be a subtype of car, right? And so Toyota Prius, Ford Mustang, right? Bada boom, bada bing. And the average price of a new Shelby GT350 Mustang is 59,400. So you can see, we can say, okay, car type, reference variable C5 equals new Shelby GT350. And if we follow the hierarchy down or up or whatever, right? Shelby GT350 extends Ford Mustang, which extends car. Now, what I'm going to do is just present like a little, what do you think is going to happen if I comment out this override here, right? Okay, let's think for a moment to yourself. I won't answer the question until, um, until we actually run this here, but Shelby GT350 extends Ford Mustang. Ford Mustang extends car, and car is up here. By extending car, it inherits average price here, now Ford Mustang, um, I'm overriding average price down here. Shelby GT350 extends Ford Mustang up here. So I'm betting you're going to, uh, to guess what it is here. What is the result on that? Let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen and Java C to recompile. And let's go ahead and run that again. Okay, let me pull this back down here real quick. So covering up the rest of that stuff up there. All right, now once I commented that out, you can see the fifth line down here says the average price of a new Ford Mustang is $25,800, right? So by commenting out this override method here, it inherited the one that's directly above it from its direct superclass. Since this was overridden here, that's the one it inherits. It does not inherit the one all the way up here from car, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this back in here. And that's, of course, why it chose to do that particular, um, invoke that particular overridden method as opposed to, you know, doing the cards one there too as well on this. Okay, let's just save this, clear our screen. Oh, recompile, rerun. Okay, now um, let's come down here to the second part of of what I've got here. So I'm displaying a new line and now I'm saying car type C array, right? So, you know, 
I don't recall if I've done any sort of arrays with objects in them before, but this might be the first one that I've done with that and throughout this tutorial series here. But I'm just going to show you kind of how this works and if this drive, this should hopefully drive the point home on what we're doing here. So um, I'm initializing this just like I would a primitive array of like say integers, right? If I did something like, um, you know, like int uh, i array, right, equals 1 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7 comma 9, right? Um, that's how we could initialize an array of primitive integer type, right? We can also initialize an array of type object, right? And that's, that's very similar, if not the same, as saying, okay, car reference variable C5 equals new Shelby GT350. This is going to have one, two, three, four, five elements of this car, of the C array, of car types, right? Now the objects are going to be, have to be uh, subtypes of this car type. All right, let me get that in out of there. Um, so they have to be subtypes of the car or the same type. So new car, new Honda Accord, new Prius, new Ford Mustang, new Shelby GT350. I've got five objects, right, that I'm initializing in this car C array here. So now I can use an enhanced for loop, right? And I say car temp, right? This is just basically creating a temporary reference that will be assigning to each of these objects in the C array as it iterates to there, right? And then I'm displaying to the console that temp, which is the reference variable of car type, and then to string, okay? Now to string, we know we inherited because class car implicitly extends objects. So each and every one of these objects has a to string method, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and run that up here, right? So let's clear our screen, compile. I suppose I really didn't need to compile that. It doesn't hurt though. All right, so as you can see, as we iterate through all of those uh, instances here, basically the default two string method will tell us, um, well, basically what type of object it is, which is a car, and then the at symbol, and then a, a hexadecimal representation of where that object is basically located in heat memory, right? So you could see the first um, element of the C array is a car object type, right? And located there. The second element is a Honda Accord object type located here, right? And that's a critical thing to understand is that even though this, this is a car type array here, right? It can refer to anything of that same type or subtype. So since Honda Accord um, in, extends car, right? This is a subclass or subtype of the car type, okay? Um, so then, uh, next one is a Toyota Prius object at this memory location. Next one's a Ford Mustang at that location. And the last one, you can see, I just chose to go ahead and override the two string method here, right? And return back this particular string right here, the 2016 GT350 has a whopping 526 horsepower. So this override here, where did that override two string come from? Well, we know it came from the object class. So we extended Ford Mustang. Now Ford Mustang extended car, so it inherited all of the, um, all the members of car. And car basically inherited all the members of object, including the two string method, okay? So if, if this all makes sense to you, then you are, you are well on your way to, um, to understanding polymorphism in a, in a nice thorough way there. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and get rid of that and just leave you with a couple final thoughts here. Um, so basically review this tutorial over and over until you finally accept the concept of assigning a reference variable to a subtype of the declared type. Now once you've accepted how all this all, all this works and you understand it, just uh, you know at that point please move on to my next tutorial and I'll explain uh, another concept that will build on top of this one here. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.